A word from this video sponsor. Got an idea for a circuit, widget, or device that you want a rapid prototype or sell? Check out JLC PCB. They offer their board manufacturing services starting at two bucks for five boards and only take a few days from start to finish. Step one, log into the link in the description. Here you can upload your board files, select options like color, quantity, and even special features uh, for a variety of applications. Step two, complete the order process, and if your boards pass validation checks, then they'll immediately begin manufacture upon payment and shipping selection. Step three, profit. Here you can see they made 50 prototype boards for me in less than three full days. How crazy is that? So make sure to check out JLC PCB, and once again, thanks for making this video possible. Now let's get on with the video. So yeah, I just got home from work, and I wanted to test out these boards I've been waiting all day. And uh, so I quickly assembled this. Okay, yeah, thanks to uh, my sponsor, within not even a week, I received a new set of boards that I redesigned, version 2.0, and um, I have bumped up the processor to a uh, PIC-16F8, uh, 887, uh, so I have more I.O., and I just pretty much threw H-bridges at the problem. And so each segment is now independently controlled. No more multiplexing, no more faffing about. But I'm going to assemble this, but you guys have already seen this board isn't that different from the other one, just a lot more soldering. So I'm going to do a little bit of magic and just have it uh, solder itself right now. So uh, let's go. Presto change -o. ta Ta-da! So yeah, soldered everything. I mean, it wasn't horrible, but... Uh, yeah, took me about 20 minutes just soldering all these chips. Anyway, now all I need to do is solder uh, the displays themselves and um, the headers and load some test firmware on and let's see if this puppy actually works. Fingers crossed. And um, so one of the things was um, the way that I multiplex the old displays, I couldn't independently control them. They would both try to change the same segments. Uh, which is obviously pointless. Uh, so each segment now has its own H bridge and it's controlled on off uh, by essentially treating as if it's a motor, whether it goes in forward or reverse. And so I'm using um, the 887 now and I had to tweak the software a little bit. But anyway, um, I did a quick test and I, I'll show you guys the result. So uh, right now, um, 12 volts in for uh, actually uh, for all the segments and five volts in via a USB uh, battery bank for the logic so I'll get right into it so um, here we got 12 volts we got five volts you can see it's switching just fine I'm tweaking the uh, it gets a little warm I think I'm I'm over driving the coils so I'm not going to drive it too long in this state uh, because it does get a little bit warm to the touch. So I'm going to decrease the uh, the pulse length and increase um, how long it, it waits in between. Um, but yeah, you can see it fully works and I'm able to control each one independently. I love that sound. Just listen to it. Okay, yeah, that's enough of that. But yeah, it is a little bit warm. I Actually, I'm not that worried about it. Um, I'm not going to be switching the digits that often um, when I'm using this as a clock um, and or a YouTube sub counter. So I'm not too worried about that. So I'm going to play around with the, um, the pulse width uh, timing. So I'll show you guys quickly the uh, software that I wrote. Uh, here you can see every every single segment I've defined, um, and there's quite a number of them. I'm using just about all the I.O. available on the uh, 887. Um, I have declarations for uh, setting the module address so that you can control it serially. Um, you can change the baud rate, all that stuff through the firmware, as well as setting uh, what I call animation delay, which is how long the... the um, it waits in between switching a, a 
pulse. So right now I have it set to 1000 and I have the pulse length set to 1000 as well. And this is uh, how long it, it'll leave each coil on. So I'm going to try playing with this, decrease it until it stops being able to switch the segments on and off and then increase it a little bit. Uh, because I really don't want to overdrive the coils. That'll just shorten the life of the display. But anyway, um, I have some examples to remind me what the exact uh, serial protocol is, how to set and uh, clear certain segments and whatnot. Um, so I have a couple functions that I use. I have some delays to find, uh, EEPROM read and write functions so I can store uh, data permanently on the microprocessor so it can remember certain things, as well as a function that is called just to update the, uh, the display. Finally, I have um, just a write function to the display that'll take um, which segment and um, like which digit, which segment, digit, pair, whatever I want to set or clear, as well as um, just some random other functions I have for initialization and whatnot. Anyway, um, the more interesting thing where all the magic actually happens is in um, these write display functions here. You can see I'm twiddling all the port values, um, and I have to check some things, actually. Uh, and additionally, the interrupt actually does all the communication layer. Um, I have receive interrupts, so it'll uh, pop into here as soon as it, it starts receiving a packet. It'll decode it uh, to extract the, the address as well as the data, and then it analyzes it. So it'll um, see if, if it's the device that the host is, is trying to talk to. And then based off of that, it spits out some debug uh, strings and whatnot, so I can tell what's going on in the system serially as it's running. And then finally, it'll respond to certain commands, um, like for instance, uh, writing AM or PM or um, changing modes between uh, number mode and segment mode. And there's a lot more detail. I did a full write-up on uh, the Hackaday I.O. page, so if you guys are interested in the technical side of this, how I got this to work, uh, check that out. Um, for more detail because I wrote pretty much the entire, I, I made up my own protocol. Um, I'm using standard serial, uh, UART serial as the actual physical layer, but the communication layer, I, I made up my own wacky uh, language essentially that you have to, to send to devices to get them to respond uh, appropriately. And I am going to try to play around with uh, sleep modes and that kind of stuff. And um, but yeah, we'll figure that out as we go. Right now, uh, all I, I'm doing, I'm actually ignoring all that, and I'm just manually setting these segments here by telling it to write to display 0 and display 1, and then telling it to clear, and then the middle digit set, and then 0 through 7 are zero, segments 0 through 7, basically. And so that's all that test was doing. Um, when you guys saw it flicking through all the different digits, that's that loop, essentially. But yeah, I have a lot of software to write. Once I can fully verify that these modules work, I have to assemble the other uh, two modules, and I'll daisy chain them together, and um, probably throw an Arduino and just like have it write to the displays and animate and whatnot and make sure that all works. Okay, so it's the next morning, and I modified the software. So before, I was just toggling these segments in series. So yeah, in this demo, um, I modify the software. I had a, um, a function which wrote uh, numbers, and it, it decoded which segments need to turn on and off and whatnot. And um, I had to debug. There was actually one or two bugs in there where it was uh, not displaying correctly, but got it all fully working now. So just plug in. First thing it does is it clears the display because it doesn't know what the display was the state of the display previously. So you can see 0, 1, 2. I'm driving these segments pretty fast, but um, at low enough duty, it should be fine.
Yeah, so that'll just continue going on and on. Pretty much till it reaches nine uh, ninety nine, and then it'll roll over. One thing I do need to fix though is um, I'm actually pulsing coils that are already set. Uh, now this controller does know what the current state of the coils are as long as it's been powered on for a little while. So I need to change the software that it'll ignore if if this segment's already on, it doesn't need to repulse it on basically. So I'm gonna need to make the software a bit more efficient because there's no point in setting the segment again to the same state that it was previously. Uh, because this these types of digits remember what state they were in anyway physically. So I'm gonna modify the software to do that to optimize. That'll also save power and um it'll limit you know wear on the coils themselves or anything like that um actually these coils are pretty uh reliable from what i read in the data sheet you can switch these segments like some ridiculous number of time like millions of times or something but yeah <clears throat> you can see that it fully works and i just love the way that um like it'll sequentially click and the sound of it and the animation of it as it, it goes through and it uh, sets the values. Something really satisfying about that. Yeah, I'm just going to sit here and let this roll over. Probably speed it up for you guys. Okay, yeah, so it's just going to repeat for all eternity now. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. And I'm going to build up, as I said, two more of these and uh, daisy chain them. And then I get to test the uh, C-Roll interface. Right now, this is running in a test mode if you uh, hold this button while it powers up. Um, actually, I think I programmed it hard, so it'll automatically go into this state at first. But I'm going to use this button for a... Uh, in display test so that when you first power it on it'll do this uh, so you can check all the segments and the processor anyway hopefully you guys enjoy the series um this is kind of a work in progress i'm gonna have future videos where i um i build upon this basically adding a master controller and all uh, but this is definitely a huge first step getting past uh my previous prototype uh which is this guy, which didn't exactly work the way I wanted it to. Uh, so unfortunately for this one, I had to use a lot more H bridges. Uh, but they're pretty cheap. I got um, a 50 pack of them. They're L9110, I think. Um, and these are from China, of course. So they took a while to arrive. But 50 pack was like 8 bucks. And 50 is enough for easily three displays and then have a few extra chips in case you damage them while you're soldering or something. But anyway, yeah. Uh, so yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.